I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on things that, that we already know and that we've heard many times. But I think there are some, some perceptions that, that, as Dr. Spitzer alluded to, that, that certainly uh, are an issue. Cattle that have talk, talk some about the visual problem influence and has some very good data. Uh, some of it from our part of the world, some of it from your part of the world, whether it's uh, from wherever those cattle are marketed and those sort of things. But there is, there is some dis uh, discrimination that occurs, no doubt, to cattle that have a lot of visible ear. And so that's, that's an issue. That to some extent, that's a perception issue. And I, my job is to put some data behind it. And to some extent, that's all our jobs, is to make sure that perception and reality come as close together as possibly can. It's hard to fight perception, but, but I think good data has as good a chance as anything. Uh, the Brahmin cattle, in particular, there's lots of studies about, about Brahmin comparisons. Not a lot of studies in the literature with Brangus comparisons. And again, we tend to paint, paint with a very broad brush and categorize all your cattle uh, in one classification. There's no doubt that straight Brahmin cattle, uh, I could talk all night about the data that showed the Brahmin cattle have lower marbling, certainly higher shear force and that sort of thing. Initially, the initial studies that looked at that assumed it was a marbling effect that was causing the tenderness, and that was before the 90s when Kamari and others uh, demonstrated the roles of calpanes and calpastat. And sure enough, when they started looking at some of those great Brahmin cattle, it was clear that they had higher calpastatin activity, and that was uh, basically negating a large part of the aging process, and therefore uh, the tenderness of, of those Brahmin cattle uh, was quite unfavorable. And again, most of those studies were done with straight Brahmin cattle, where very high percentage uh, cattle, half or more, you know, I think about Brangus cattle being 3 three eighths and the Brangus sired calf uh, being a 3 sixteenths, so less than a quarter, is a little bit different from that. The, the first page of the paper I'm going to talk about a little bit, and, and this paper came out of Georgia during the time that I was there. I was not part of the study. It came out of the meat science group with <coughs> Dean Pringle and Scott Williams and Smitty Lamb, uh, some of the grad students, all good friends of mine. Um, that, uh, and I, I, didn't, I never studied their data, honestly. I didn't really study their data and study the paper until recently. I'm, I'm guilty and maybe all of us are a little guilty of, of if we see what came out in the journal this month and we read the implications and we maybe skim through the abstract and don't dig, dig in. We just don't have time to dig through every paper that we'd like to dig through as much. But I went back and dug through this one a little bit and I found what I thought were some interesting information. But Dean and, and co-workers worked with some cattle that, that came from the Florida station uh, and they had Brahmin Angus steers of various compositions from straight Angus to straight Brahmin and in between cattle that were quarter Brahmin three-eighths Brahmin, half, and three-quarter Brahmin. And they had about 10 to 13 head of each of these, fed those cattle together, and then at the end of the study, uh, hung them, graded them, and then looked at things like calpene and calpastatin activity. Up to this point, I think it was clear that the, the Brahmin disadvantage was there, but it was not necessarily clear exactly what the, what the intermediate process might show. And I'm going to start with their conclusion, and, and uh, that this is lifted right out of their paper. Uh, that, that at the, you know, in the summary statement and the implications of the paper, it says our data shows strong relationships between galpostatin activity, new calpane activity, marbling score, and percentage Brahmin breeding. And then suggesting a possible combined, tenor, combined effect, suggesting a combined effect on H. tenderness of intermediate Brahmin crosses. And that's, at the time, when I knew what they were doing, uh, that was sort of my take on it, is that that if a, if, a, if a Brahmin is really tough and an Angus is really tender, that a blood must be right in the middle, and that there's sort of a linear relationship. So when I started this project, I thought, well, I need to go back and read that paper again and dig into the data a little closer and, and talk about it a little bit more and, and see what's there. And this is what I found. That I first write out of their paper, and, and they do show, for example, a significant linear contrast for Marvel. But you know, my stat teacher always said, before you run any contrast, you ought to plot the data a little bit and kind of look at it and see. And while there is a linear trend there, uh, no doubt about it, that it's getting pulled on pretty hard right side. But the, the cattle that are a relatively low percent Brahmin, uh, the quarters and the three eighths, for example, don't show a tremendous di discount. Only a big decrease as you get out of quarter Brahmin cattle. But the three eighths are actually uh, not much different than the, than the quarter bloods, and those not are dramatically different than the Angus. So, considering how Angus ranks, ranks in the population overall in terms of marbling, probably not a real disappointing result for the three eighths and less cattle. This is mucalpane activity. Mucalpane is the favorable enzyme working uh, in tenderness. Uh, they did find a linear trend plus a quadratic effect, and that's how they reported it. But actually, the cattle that were most favorable in terms of mucalpane were the 3 8 Brahmins, more favorable than the eggs, right out of the paper. And, and again, I did, when my first paper came, came, came out, I didn't 
uh, uh, pick this up. But if you look at the data, uh, look at the numbers, they don't plot it quite this way, they just show the numbers and tables. But if you look at the level of eucal pain in, in the creates uh, promise in this particular study, the, those cattle were actually the most favored. They show a linear trend other than those, but they seem to be sort of an outline. And again, the biggest decline comes from the three quarter blood Brahmins and the full bloods. Calpostatin, again, that's a, a blocker of calpain, and so that's the one we would just like to have lower levels. And you can see that the Angus are the most desirable, the full blood, uh, full Brahmins are, are the least. So you see an increasing trend there. But again, the biggest decrease, the increase comes beyond three eighths uh, on that study. Again, 10 numbers, 10 per, uh, per group and some of that sort of thing. But not overwhelming evidence that, that the intermediates are, are that unfavorable. They also expressed it as a ratio of calpostatin to, to mucalpain, and distribution of, of the two uh, variables and some of those sort of things. But actually the cattle that had the most favorable ratio uh, of calpostatin and mucalpain, with, mu with mucalpain being favorable, so lower numbers being favorable, were actually the, the 3 8 Brahmin, 5 8 Angus, were actually more favorable. Again, a fair bit of standard error around those. And a linear trend, a linear plus quadratic is what they reported as significant. But in terms of, there was not a significant uh, to the Angus cattle uh, over the, uh, the maybe over the quarter blood, but not over the 3 8 Sure force, again, is, is the one that, that that's most, uh, you know, people worry the most about, even though there's not a, not a big economic incentive directly. Uh, we know it's the right thing for the industry to do to, to reduce uh, shear force and increase tenderness and those sort of things. And again, in that study with those, again, 10 to 13 per sire group, uh, that the, the Angus and the Brangus, or more or less Brangus, they were not necessarily Brangus, but were 3 8 5 8 Angus, that the, the uh, Angus and the Three eights, five eights were very similar, and again the greatest increase. Again, they report this as a linear trend, and SAS tells them it's significant at p.05, but with five points determining the line that you can, you know, again when I plot the data and visualize it in that way, I don't necessarily percent agree with their, with their. So I guess my summary of their paper, which may not be exactly the same as theirs, but they clearly showed high levels of Brahmin influence were detrimental to carcass quality, and certainly to palatability and shear force. When we get to the cattle of more than a half Brahmin, there's definitely some, some significant differences. But in most cases, the, the 3 8 5 8 and less uh, Brahmin were not significantly different from Angus in, those particular, in this particular study. And for tenderness and enzyme activity, the two that, that we worry the most about, uh, kind of pulling out the purebred Angus, almost exactly the same, not just, not just the fact that they didn't show significant difference, but that the numeric means were almost identical. 